Death to Publishing with Quark Express. My name is Martin Turner. Uh, this week we're going to be looking at content variables and the power they have for content automation. Well, I want to picture an example where we're doing a, a conference brochure and we're doing hundreds of these different conferences. They're all basically the same conference in different places on different dates. And somebody sends you uh, spreadsheets, uh, but the information they want on there is all in different parts of the layout. So uh, this one is really kind of in draft, and this is not a real conference, you cannot book for this. Um, but uh, over here, we've got the, uh, uh, the venue, uh, which is Ghent in Belgium. Uh, we've got the, uh, um, uh, the actual address, uh, the New of Art, if you've ever been there. Um, we've got the date, uh, we've got the price, we've got uh, where you, uh, how you register, um, and all those kind of details like that. The only problem is that um, if someone sends you their spreadsheet, then uh, you're going to spend a lot of time uh, typing these in. Well, maybe. Um, over here, let's just move these, um, uh, uh, let's just move this over here. Uh, I've copied in, or rather, I think I did copy in for this one, but I could have downloaded it, uh, the Excel spreadsheet section with that on it. And you can see it's got title, date, location, etc, etc, etc. All the things that the person would have. Now, um, I could have brought this as an inline table, uh, in which case I would have just applied one style sheet and it would have done everything for me, but I haven't, so I can show you what's going on. Because uh, each one of these is a different uh, style sheet, as you can see. Uh, and uh, so that's var title, that one is var date, that one is var location, that one is var deadline, that one is var address. I've just called it var for variable, var price, uh, var price early, uh, early bird cutoff, var deadline early, uh, var check address, uh, bank number, didn't create one, etc, etc, etc. And these then connect to content variables down here. So uh, let's look at that one. It's a running header type. Now, running header is a slight misnomer. That's where they came from, where you could do uh, the chapter title like this one in the book. But they can do so much more because all they do is look at a style sheet and they take the uh, first used on the spread or the previous spread, if it's not used in the spread, or on the page, or the last on page or last on the spread. Uh, and uh, it then lifts that up. Now, if you come over here, and we'll have a look again at this. Um, uh, what we're going to see is if we turn on uh, highlight content variables, that all this information, um, uh, and we, it's got to be on, so I'm going to turn that back on again actually. Uh, so we'll turn trim view off uh, so we can see ourselves. Um, it's got to be on the page, and you see it instantly appears. So where we were missing, uh, the information, it appears. So now what happens is instead of uh, every time you get this blessed conference brochure, which you've got 50 to do uh, by uh, the day after tomorrow, and you know you're going to be working through these until very late at night, uh, uh, trying to get the details right, and you also know that you won't get them all right and it will be your fault. And if then someone books incorrectly, because people never proof of these things correctly, even though you ask them to, uh, you'll really be in trouble. Uh, now, uh, you don't need to do that because uh, all you're going to do is you do it, you put them in once, and then you simply change the table. Uh, and because all the table comes in together, uh, all the details are, are correct. It may mean you have the wrong file, but you'll never have a file which is incorrect. Now, this does some other clever things which we'll talk about some other time because it also uh, lifts out a list of the events from another table I've downloaded using the list function. We've talked about that some other time. Um, but that's just to whet your appetite. Let's go and have a look now at um, how these content variables uh, actually work. So uh, over here, uh, I've got um, uh, just the name Darcy. Uh, you may know this from Pride and Prejudice or from Bridget Jones's Diary, depending on how high or lowbrow you are. And I've got the content variables uh, uh, dialog palette over here. I just find that in window content variable, or I can go to utility, content variable new, 
or using one I've already got. There are some which always come in with you. I've deleted a couple of them, uh, but I'm going to create a new one now. And what have I got an offer? I've got creation date, which you can have in any format of your choosing. You can have no, uh, no um, month, uh, just the year or whatever you want. Um, you can have a current page number, uh, which is always the current page number, obviously it's the same as command of control three. You can have a custom variable where we actually uh, collect various things together. But let's first create a, a running header type where I'm going to go and look at this content type one. It's just a tag first on page. And we'll look at that. And what I've done here is I've got a style sheet called content type one. I've, I've tagged Darcy with content type one. So uh, running header one, I think we'll change that name to name. Uh, and I'm gonna just put a, a little dot there to help me keep them all in order. Uh, and if I now add in name here, uh, I've got uh, show content variables on, uh, I can turn that off again, but I'll turn it back on. Um, uh, it produces that name. Now, imagine that I want to, uh, not a file name, but the custom variable, I want to put in a text string, Mr. Space, um, uh, space plus, uh, context variable, my, my uh, name, uh, and another text string, uh, space FRCA, Fellow of the World College of Arts. I'm not a member of that. Uh, don't be offended if you are, it's just an example. And I'm gonna put that in there. And now, whenever we use, uh, again, I should have um, given that a decent name, like uh, dot full uh, title of person. Uh, and uh, that now appears in the bottom there, it's much more convenient. Uh, and if I just drag that across there, I'll double click it, Mr. Darcy FRCA. Okay, what else have we got? Um, so I've got file name, I can just have the name of the file. So at the moment, uh, I, uh, I have one of those already, uh, and uh, it's just project one because I haven't saved it. But if you're using your um, uh, project file naming, uh, to be the same as the name of the document, you can then automatically have the correct document name printed in the document. Very useful for version control. Well, let's come back to that. Okay, uh, let's carry on. Uh, let's see what else we've got. So, um, uh, what else can I have? A uh, flow box page number. This is really interesting. Um, so, uh, Let's say I want to go to the next box. Um, so we're going to do uh, next box. Um, and in the past, I had to kind of type that in. So uh, I've got some text here, which flows onto page three. But instead of typing in page three, I can just put next box. Um, uh, hang on. Uh, see page three. And down on page three, where I'd previously typed in continued from one, I can now just uh, do the same thing, uh, this time with uh, flow page box number, next box, previous box, uh, previous box. Uh, and uh, if I just double click on that, uh, it will be continued from one. So I've got C page three or continued, uh, on page three, and I've got uh, continued from one. Okay, what else have we got? Um, last page number. If you're one of these people that, uh, and you can have scope, of the it can be section or layout. Uh, so if I, um, if I just introduce a new section there, um, uh, section start, and we're going to be call this uh, um, section two. Um, that only uh, this name thing only works for HTML5 uh, publications, by the way. Hasn't got any other, other use. And we're going to have the format of that. It's going to be A, B, C, and D. Um, uh, and it's going to be appendix. Um, or your app. Um, uh, actually, we'll just change that a little bit. Um, make that app. space, okay? Um, and uh, so now if I do um, last page, uh, 
In this case, we're going to make last page number uh, the last page of the section, no, the layout. So, um, uh, won't quite work because uh, last of B, um, but we've got last of section here uh, and last of layout uh, there. Um, uh, Final page is app B. Uh, very useful if you want to make sure that you're giving people the entire document. If you work for a local authority uh, in many parts of the world, then that's the kind of thing that you see uh, all the time. Well, let's go on and have a look at what else we've got. Uh, so, um, okay, coming down, uh, we're now going to uh, modification date works just like a creation date. Uh, next page number um, uh, simply gives us the next page number in the section or the layout. Um, okay, useful to some. Output date, again, uh, very useful if you're doing document control. Page reference, now this will pick up, this is new I think in 2017, this will pick up uh, an anchor name. So uh, let's go to um, uh, this page uh, and we're going to um, create an anchor. Uh, we've got our window um, uh, so we won't go there. We're going to do uh, style anchor new. Uh, this is anchor uh, anchor uh, one. Um, and, uh, oh, it doesn't want to contain spaces, uh, so we'll just call it one. Okay, uh, and you can see that little anchor comes up there. If we now go back to uh, our page reference, and we've only got one, so uh, anchor uh, space um, is here, and it will also create the hyperlink for it. So let's go back up to here and say, uh, uh, Anchor, we don't even have to put that, um, uh, page reference, um, uh, okay, we've, we've given that B as the number, which isn't going to make a great deal of sense in this particular case. Let's change that uh, to uh, not start the section there. Uh, uh, anchor 4 uh, is here, so we, we just want to change the um, uh, the way we're spelling that out uh, because uh, that page reference doesn't make any sense by calling it anchor. Uh, page um, uh, one, uh, page four uh, links here, put that in there, creates the hyperlink uh, and again I just wanted to make uh, put a space in there. Um, of course you can have any text render that you want uh, but uh, for example if you want links going on your document uh, or uh, simply a reference to that anchor. So uh, find, let's just get rid of that a little bit. Um, uh, um, uh, more information on this subject is to be found on uh, page four. Uh, and so it goes. So, uh, Almost done. What else have we got? Uh, previous page number is just the number of the page before. Uh, again, more useful when you're working with sections and layouts. The running header we talked about, so the running header just picks up any style sheet you like. Uh, it could be a, a character style sheet, it could be a text style, uh, it could be a paragraph style sheet. And finally, static text, uh, you can have anything you want. Uh, this is some static uh, text. So for example, uh, if I always want to uh, write about Quark Express 2017 uh, and I'm fed up of typing it in, uh, perhaps it's a name I find difficult to spell, I've got ham-fisted, uh, then uh, I can just put that in there, anything I want. Well, um, that kind of wraps it up for uh, content variables. Um, coming back for a second to our uh, starting point, we have the option to do some quite extensive document autom automation uh, when uh, the chips are really down. And if we just turn uh, hide suppressed on, then we don't even see uh, that table. Now that's a kind of extreme example, uh, but uh, the more that I use 
uh, content variables, uh, the easier they become. It's a very simple thing. Now these, these work just like regular text. So unlike in some applications, unlike in much earlier versions of Quark Express, they wrap correctly so you can have text wrapping onto different lines. So it, in principle, this can be quite long chunks of text. You can have whole paragraphs lifted from one place and put in another place. Um, obviously, if you're using text selection and character styles, you could even be even longer than paragraphs. Um, there's a limit, of course, to all these things, how useful they are before they get out of hand. But if you're not using content variables, uh, almost anybody, I think, can benefit from uh, this feature. But that's all we've got time for this time. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Martin Turner, author of Desktop Publishing for Quark Express, or with Quark Express 2017. The book is available. Please get yourself a copy. In the meantime, happy quarking. <laughs>